So we're at the Tower of David, one of my favourite places. It's not only a historical museum with quaint little rooms in which you can see uh, the explanations about the different periods in the history of Jerusalem, but it's also a place where the actual museum itself, the building, has all the historical levels which it is describing. So if you were to look out behind me, you'd see, for example, um, Herodian stonework, so I'm giving you a telltale sign, follow closely. If you're in this building and you see stones which have a central part protruding outward and around them they have a frame which is a little sunken back, then you know you're looking at stones which have been cut roughly 2,000 years ago, so up to 4 BC when Herod died. There are loads of different levels though here as well. Just underneath me there are Hasmonean uh, remnants. Behind them it's Byzantine architecture, so early Christian rule of Jerusalem between the 4th and the 6th century. All around, you can see in the walls, in the really, really fortified walls, you can see Crusader architecture, you see very finely cut stone, which looks a little bit as if it's been combed with a hair comb. That's the second telltale sign of the day for recognizing Crusader masonry. And you can see how, what strong fortifications there are in a mix between Crusader fortifications and later Ottoman fortifications, which latch onto them. You can see also the Ottoman minaret, so the uh, tower which calls the Muslims to prayers five times a day. And and for me it's really interesting because the place itself is such a strategic point in the topography of Jerusalem so everyone utilized the same citadel no matter what time they came to Jerusalem or what um, background they came and what type of political rulers they were Christian Muslims uh, or Jewish rulers of Jerusalem and it's a place to walk around look inside look outside you're in a city within a city that has so many levels of history and so many people that use it fortify themselves in it the city fell with them, the city rose again, and it's all in place. So any of you who are watching this from home and not in the application at the sites themselves haven't felt the number of stairs which we've just climbed up to reach this roof, which has no shade. So I'm going to try and be brief. Why did we have to climb up so many stairs? Well, that's exactly the point. We're here on the high tower in order to get a feel for the fortifications. And that's the reason that this tower actually exists, to give a sense of how high and how strong it was. Because it was the Romans who destroyed the city in 70 AD, who are recorded by Josephus Flavius, Josephus, um, in the Wars of the Jews, as saying that they left the towers in order to tell the story to the next generations about the large city, the high fortifications, the strong bastions, which they brought to their knees with um, their virility and strength. And now we're looking over the city itself and there's so much of its history that gets told by the buildings. We're looking out into the new city which began being built between 1948 and 1967. We're looking at some of the most historic sites like the domes of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre began here in the 4th century and continually rebuilt in 1048 and in 1099 after the Crusader conquest of Jerusalem. We're looking at later um, churches like the, church, the Lutheran Church of the Redeemer which was added in the 19th century when different European um, empires try to get their piece of Jerusalem. And I think getting a piece of Jerusalem and leaving a nation story or religion story in the city through their buildings is a lot of what can be seen behind me. The different times, the different narratives, the different buildings that were erected in the city in order to try and leave a bit of history behind for posterity. And I hope you look at it and you feel that in some respect it has worked.